After Phil expressed his love to Carol and Carol found out about Erica's pregnancy, she firmly refused to be with Phil. Meanwhile, Phil immediately tried to talk to Erica about their child. However, Gail prevented him from speaking to Erica because she didn't want Erica to get close to Phil again. Eventually, Phil found himself isolated, without friends, and unable to leave Malibu because he would soon have a child. Feeling sidelined, Tandy attempted to regain his throne. He continuously sought attention, starting from discussing the injury on his face caused by Phil's punch to asking about remedies for his face. However, the outcome was futile as no one cared. During lunch, Phil returned and once again tried to talk to Erica, claiming he had something for her. However, all the women agreed not to approve of it. Consequently, Phil retreated again. Curious about Phil's actions, Tandy observed Phil, who had made a baby carriage long before his child was born. Still resentful, Tandy tried to act indifferent. Still in search of attention, Tandy was willing to do anything as long as everyone paid attention to him. Gail then tried her luck by asking for Tandy's help to fetch her favorite chips from the supermarket. With joy, Tandy took the request and went to the supermarket to get Gail's favorite chips. After fetching Gail's favorite chips and delivering them, Tandy remained curious about what was happening with Phil. Approaching Phil, who was disposing of the baby carriage he had made, Tandy observed his presence. Phil asked him to step away because he didn't want Tandy to approach him again. But Tandy would only advise Phil to willingly accept being restrained and follow his plan. Because that way, Phil would soon be accepted back by their community. But Phil didn't believe that right away. And instead, he regretted saving Tandy's life on the billboard. Then Phil left Tandy. The situation began to change when everyone started prioritizing their own busyness. Starting from Carol, who decided to check her pregnancy by continuously searching for a pregnancy checker. On one side, Gail, who still felt and missed Gordon's presence, was willing to make a doll that she dressed just like Gordon. Erica, holding a gift from Carol for her first child while waiting for certainty about whether she would consider Phil the father of her child. Todd, who decided to sleep on the couch after breaking up with Melissa, and likewise with Melissa. When Tandy tried to talk to Todd sleeping on the couch, he suddenly looked towards the beach and there Phil was lying helpless. Finally, Tandy quickly approached him and tried to bring Phil to the shore. Despite the difficulty of moving Phil's body, Tandy kept trying to save Phil. Let me out. Freaking fart face. Yes. Oh. I'm a freaking idiot Finn here. Oh, hi, Phil's penis. That about leave me up on that billboard. Both off leash. I wish I was a lot more. <laughs> Realize is that I looked up to you like the whole time. Until finally, Tandy succeeded in moving Phil. After he moved him, Tandy immediately joined Carol who had fallen asleep first. As Tandy was about to fall asleep, suddenly he heard Phil's voice calling his name. Instead of moving him to his residence, Tandy actually moved Phil to be restrained. In the morning, Tandy quickly summoned everyone to witness Phil, whom he claimed had restrained himself. However, Phil stated that it was Tandy who had restrained him. But the people weren't interested in that. Instead, they were more interested in the cow that kept making noise until they approached the cow. They discovered that the cow had given birth to another calf. Seeing that the cow could reproduce, everyone immediately had the idea to find the male cow to further expand their breeding efforts. They formed a team and divided into several areas to search for the whereabouts of the male cow. Meanwhile, Tandy left Phil, who kept asking to be released, promising to bring the male cow to him. Back to Tandy, after hearing Phil's explanation promising to bring the male cow, he coordinated it with his community. Tandy presented how their chances of getting the male cow quickly would increase with Phil's help. Trusting Phil's work, they agreed to end his punishment. Then Tandy quickly informed Phil of this, and he immediately released him. Instead of joining the others to search for the male cow, Phil went to his car and told Tandy to relay his message to the others, never to care about him again. Then Phil just left. The scene then shifted to the astronaut named Mike Miller, still trying to communicate with other humans via radio. As he continued to talk, he suddenly heard another voice. Mike promptly responded to the conversation. But when he became excited, thinking his efforts had paid off, it turned out the other voice was just his own echoing. Finally, frustrated, he damaged the radio and resigned to his fate. The scene then moved to a dinner event, where Tandy wanted to clarify why everyone started focusing on their own affairs. Tandy gave each of them a stone to lament if they were to live alone out there without anyone else's help. 
but it seemed like everyone didn't care much, especially Melissa, who was tired of Tandy's words. However, Tandy asked her to sit for a moment and listen to his explanation. As Tandy was about to explain, Gail suddenly interrupted and blamed Melissa. This led to chaos, with everyone blaming each other. Fed up with it all, Tandy threw the stone he was holding out the window, causing it to break and everyone to fall silent. The next day, everyone gathered silently in the living room and went about their business. Melissa read a book, Erica ate food for pregnant women, Gail kept drinking, Tandy did something unclear, Carol knitted, and Todd just contemplated after regretting his breakup with Melissa. In the midst of loneliness and silence, the situation became cheerful when they suddenly saw a big male cow right in front of them, brought by Phil. Without hesitation, they slaughtered it and turned it into steaks, holding a lavish dinner. And of course, they were happy, momentarily forgetting their individual problems, including Phil, who was eventually invited to dinner, enjoying the steak that they hadn't had for a long time. Carol came up with the idea to celebrate Christmas, preparing slips of paper containing all the Tucson family members' names. Gathering everyone, including Phil, she initiated a gift exchange where each person drew a name and would then give a gift to the person whose name they drew. After the event, everyone went about their activities, except Phil, who remained isolated due to his past actions. Feeling sorry for him, Tandy pleaded with everyone to allow him to meet Phil, and Erica agreed, granting Tandy permission. Quickly, Tandy went to Phil's house and gave him a slip with Erica's name, implying Phil should give Erica a gift to mend their relationship. However, instead of gratitude, Phil slammed the door in Tandy's face. On the night of the event, Phil arrived with great dignity, prepared to deliver a speech thanking someone who never gave up on him, saving his life. Tandy hoped to be the one mentioned and prepared a warm embrace, but Phil referred to God instead, disappointing Tandy. In space, Mike remained adrift without communication, gazing at a family photo with Tandy in it. His sadness deepened when he had to administer bitter pills to his beloved pet, Terry, who couldn't survive much longer. The next day, the gift exchange began. Carol enthusiastically started with a brief speech, followed by Erica, who announced she got Carol's name. She presented Carol with a special chair used in the Oprah studio and a scarf from Carol's favorite singer. Next was Todd who declared his gift for someone special, leading Melissa to hope she was the one, but Todd chose Gail. He led everyone outside to reveal a vintage luxury car, thrilling Gail but keeping their relationship discreet. Then it was Tandy's turn, but he picked his own name. He gifted himself a useless cruise ship and blew it up in front of everyone when it proved worthless. The exchange continued with Carol giving a large box containing shooting boots to Melissa, who reluctantly accepted it. Melissa, in turn, gave Todd a crown and scepter to ease his high school prom memories. Phil, having Erica's name, apologized and led everyone to a room where he gave Erica a medical device to see her baby's movements, bringing tears to her eyes and forgiveness to Phil. That night, they celebrated Christmas with Melissa unexpectedly proposing to Todd and Phil collapsing in agony. In space, Mike, about to give up, spotted a single caterpillar, renewing his hope and canceling his plan to exit the rocket. After being thrown into space, Mike immediately extended the emergency rope that allowed him to return to the rocket and finally, he took care of a newly born caterpillar. Remembering his twin, he named the caterpillar Phil. Back in Malibu, Phil's condition became more critical. Gail, who had some medical background, tried to diagnose what Phil was experiencing. Initially, Gail diagnosed Phil with just a common cold, but Phil refuted it because what he felt was much different from a common cold. Finally, Gail consulted medical guidebooks and eventually found a disease similar to what Phil described, appendicitis. Then Gail said Phil needed to be operated on immediately to remove the appendix. But since there were no other doctors besides Gail, everyone tried to persuade her to handle Phil's surgery. At first, Gail refused because she didn't dare to perform a major surgery, especially since she wasn't a doctor. But after Erica persuaded her and asked for help directly, Gail agreed to operate on Phil with the condition that she must learn the procedure for appendectomy first. Initially, Gail tried to learn the surgery by cutting a pie, but she felt that method was not effective for learning. Eventually, Gail asked Tandy to fulfill her wish, which was to learn using a cadaver. Yes, Gail asked Todd and Tandy to find a cadaver for her to use in learning surgery. Tandy and Todd then went to the hospital to find a cadaver that still had complete organs. But after several checks, they couldn't find the cadaver, so Tandy had an idea. He went to an old cemetery and tried to dig up a fresh-looking corpse, then brought it back to Malibu. However, 
When Tandy and Todd brought it back to Malibu and explained that they had a problem with the cadaver being in the hospital so they had to dig up the grave, Gail suddenly said she had found what she needed, a toy doll used for surgical student learning. Feeling sorry for bringing the corpse, Tandy and Phil decided to put it back in its original grave. The situation worsened when Phil kept groaning in pain while Gail was pressured to learn faster. But when Erica asked Gail to finish her learning, she suddenly panicked when she saw Phil walking and shortly after became unconscious again. After seeing Phil unconscious, Gail immediately tried her best to perform surgery. Accompanied by Todd, who tried to convince Gail that she could do the surgery, the operation finally began. Meanwhile, on another side, Mike decided to descend to Earth, resigned and hoping to land safely. Back to the surgery, when Gail felt she had found the appendix causing Phil's pain, she immediately removed it. But it seemed she performed the procedure wrong, causing Phil to bleed. Everyone panicked seeing Phil's condition and Gail and Todd tried to stop the bleeding. But they couldn't do much, and slowly Phil's blood thinned, and he was declared dead. Meanwhile, Mike was racing with light and time to penetrate back into Earth's atmosphere. The scene begins with Mike Miller finally managing to return to Earth and safely landing on a ship sailing in the middle of the sea. After landing, he quickly grabbed one of the rowboats he used to seek help. Day by day, he went through looking for anyone who could help him. After traveling quite a distance, Mike finally found a cruise ship, which he immediately boarded and ate all the food on board. Afterward, he drank some drinks and put on new clothes that he hadn't used in a long time. But when Mike was in that happy condition, suddenly a mysterious person appeared and immediately pointed an arrow at Mike, threatening him. Afraid, Mike introduced himself as Mike Miller an astronaut who had just arrived on Earth after three years in space. But this person accused Mike of being the one spreading the virus on Earth. However, Mike swore he knew nothing about it. Trusting Mike after he apologized for his behavior, the mysterious man finally agreed to help Mike. Then they introduced themselves, where the owner of the boat was named Pat Brown. Then Mike had the idea of going back to land so they could restock for survival. But Pat said that the supplies he had now were more than enough. Then Pat asked Mike's intentions for wanting to return to land. Mike replied that he had a family, and he still hoped his family would be found alive so he could be back with them, especially since he didn't know the condition of the earth after leaving for three years. But Pat didn't explain and instead told Mike to rest in his room. In the morning, Pat woke Mike up, and he finally decided to go to land as Mike wanted. But Pat said they would do it his way. Then Mike agreed, and they set off for the shore wearing surgical attire, covered in antivirus fabric, and masked faces. Upon arrival on land, Mike immediately touched the sand and said he missed Earth very much. Not wanting to waste too much time, Pat immediately took Mike to search for food supplies. In the middle of the journey, Mike suddenly asked about the whereabouts of all the corpses declared dead from the virus. Understanding that Mike had just returned to Earth, Pat showed Mike some corpses lined up due to the deadly virus that hit the Earth. Then Pat tried to convince Mike about his belief regarding his family whether they were still alive or maybe among the corpses they saw. After seeing the corpses, then Pat asked Mike to comply with his request. That is to play tennis. Because he was still stiff and hadn't adjusted his movements on Earth with space, Mike had to admit Pat's superiority. After finishing the tennis game, they continued their journey, where they were on an elevated road. Mike suddenly asked Pat to stop the car, but because he didn't want Mike to see something. Pat stepped on the gas until the car sped up. Luckily, Mike managed to hold the car and he could see something. Namely, the inscription still alive in Tucson, written by Tandy. Then very happily, Mike said someone was still alive in his hometown. But suddenly, Pat came and immediately hit Mike until he passed out. When he woke up, Mike suddenly found himself on the beach where Pat was going to do something to him. But Mike tried to fight Pat until finally a brief fight ensued, won by Pat. When Pat was about to do what he wanted, he suddenly saw a tear in Mike's clothing. Because he didn't want to catch the virus, Pat kept Mike among the corpses affected by the virus. And it turned out, Mike was still alive, and he immediately left Pat to go to Tucson. After Phil Miller was pronounced dead due to the appendicitis he suffered, everyone quickly bathed and laid him in the coffin. It was evident that everyone deeply mourned Phil, especially Erica, who was pregnant with his child. After the ceremony, Tandy gave a brief speech, and afterward, he sent Phil's coffin out to sea. Then everyone started to go about their activities. While Tandy and Carol were together, Tandy suddenly said he wanted to talk to Carol. Curiously, Carol looked at Tandy's face, who told her that Todd and Gail had become involved. Hearing this startled Carol because she remembered Todd was Melissa's boyfriend. However, 
Tandy explained that Todd had ended his relationship with Melissa and asked Carol not to tell Melissa about it yet. Carol really wanted to tell her friend, but she didn't want to break her promise and promise to keep the secret. That night, in remembrance of their friend, Tandy decided to perform a song he had composed especially for Phil. Tandy earnestly tuned his guitar first to make it sound better. But when he played the song, Tandy didn't touch the guitar at all. Instead, he used it as a percussion instrument. Feeling embarrassed because no one was touched by his song, Tandy pretended to leave, saying he hadn't finished the song yet. Then the scene shifted to Todd approaching Melissa to talk about his rejection of Melissa's proposal. Melissa replied that she didn't care about it anymore and now saw Todd only as a friend. She even invited Todd to watch TV for the sake of their friendship. Todd agreed, seeing Melissa only as a friend. After meeting Melissa, Todd approached Gail, with whom he had plans beforehand. But when Gail was ready, Todd suddenly said he had business with Melissa first. He apologized to Gail and promised to return soon once his business with Melissa was finished. With a hint of anger, Gail allowed Todd to deal with his issues with Melissa. The scene then shifted to Tandy, who had an idea to commemorate his friend. He renovated the baby carriage that Phil had created for his unborn baby. And he immediately gave the carriage to Erica, even saying that Phil had told him to take care of Erica and their baby. But that was just empty talk because Erica knew better about what Phil had said. The last thing Phil said to her was, don't let Tandy raise our child, meaning Phil didn't want Tandy to take care of his child. Feeling ashamed, Tandy decided not to give the baby carriage, which turned out to be broken again, and decided to leave. In Melissa's room, Todd not only watched TV but also dated Melissa again. Although Todd's face showed guilt for cheating on Gail, he continued the event until the next morning. Melissa went to Carol and told her everything. She had a feeling that she would be back together with Todd. Hearing the story, Carol could only be happy while keeping Todd's dark secret. The last scene in this episode shows Tandy deciding to burn all of Phil's personal belongings after learning the fact that Phil didn't want Tandy to raise his child. Instead of wanting Phil to stay away from him, he suddenly saw Phil's coffin coming back from the sea. Then Erica approached Tandy. Eventually, they both decided to bury Phil's body rather than dispose of his corpse at sea. This is the end of The Last Man on Earth Season 2 on Part 7. Like, comment, and subscribe so I will soon make a recap of Part 8 for The Last Man on Earth. Thank you for watching.